Thank you, Dave. I appreciate that. Just would like to welcome uh, Commissioner Petiti to the Big Ten. And the short time we've worked together, I've been very impressed and really looking forward to his leadership in our conference. I'm honored and blessed to be representing Indiana University here today. And I am very, very proud to be an Indiana Hoosier. I'd like to begin by honoring the memory of Vi Talaferro. Last month, we lost a very special member of our Bloomington community. In 2021, the Big Ten created the George and Vi Talaferro Fellowship in honor of this amazing couple. One of the players we brought here today, his name is Aaron Casey, linebacker. He wears number 44 in honor of George Talaferro. We decided to come up with a new tradition of selecting a player each year that will wear that number that best represents the work ethic, dedication, integrity, and per perseverance that George Talaferro displayed. And Aaron Casey is a perfect representation of this honor. Aaron's a graduate with a degree in financial management, all Big Ten linebacker, one of the best returning players at that position in our conference, and has become one of our best players and one of our best leaders. So excited to have him here today. Also, Noah Pierre, a very versatile defensive back, is with us. Noah is a special, special young man. Came to Indiana, had to earn his stripes the hard way, took a few years to play on special teams, and probably not play as much as he wanted on defense, but man, he just stayed the course. So tremendous perseverance and grit. And was rewarded a couple seasons ago to have that opportunity. He's been a starter ever since. Also a graduate with a degree in kinesiology. Awesome, awesome young man. And also running back Jalen Lucas is here with us today. As a true freshman, became an All-American first team as a kick returner. As was also mentioned, the Big Ten return specialist of the year. And as special as he is on the football field, he's even better off. 3.2 GPA, tremendous worker, leader, humble, and a great representation for our program. I'm extremely excited for the upcoming season. Our one word for 2023 is toughness. We define that as the mental and physical strength to persevere. We had eight games last season that were decided in the fourth quarter. So for the past seven months, we've been building our toughness and developing this football team to be able to finish those opportunities. We have a strong nucleus returning, and we had great success in the portal. We were very focused on identifying young men across this country that were the best football players that fit our culture, that wanted to be in Indiana. Obviously a compressed window to figure that out, so therefore we focused a lot on guys we already knew, had recruited previously or coached, may have coached at a previous school, or had a chance to be able to get to know a coach on that staff that was with them every single day. I think that's very, very important. Also really excited about the three new staff members we have on the, on the field. Bob Bostad, our new offensive line coach, brings a tremendous experience in identifying and developing offensive linemen in the Big Ten Conference, as well as Matt Guerrero, who will be coaching our safeties and co-defensive coordinator that will be calling our defense. And then finally, Anthony Tucker, who's our new wide receivers coach that brings tremendous experience, once again, focused on identifying and developing players at his position. So excited about this program. Obviously have a challenging schedule ahead of us. Very excited about the future. Got to build it, keep growing every single day. Questions? Yep, we're going to start right here down in front. Gwen Parks, Indiana University Student Television Station. Coach, is it difficult to uh, build confidence with such a young team when your first game of the season is against a powerhouse like Ohio State? Well, you know, I've, I've been blessed here. So I've been head coach for seven years, and five of those seven years we've opened with a Big Ten opponent. So very familiar with this process. My first season was the Ohio State Buckeyes back in 2017. So challenging, yes, uh, but I would say uh, it forced you to grow up real fast. And so the urgency that the offseason uh, is impacted by this reality of who you play September 2nd to open the season, uh, I think it helps you. It helps you grow. It helps you have that attention to detail at a high level. Uh, everybody's excited about the start of the season, but I think when it's that kind of an opponent, it all gets raised to another level. So uh, our team knows that, we understand that. 
Uh, there's a, a, an urgency that our staff has because of it, and fall camp is affected by that in a very positive way. So it's a challenge that we embrace without question. Coach, we'll go right down here in the center. Uh, Sammy Jacobs from Hoosier Huddle. Uh, the wide receiver group seems to be more diverse in body types and, and skill set and stuff like that. Is that something that Coach Tucker brought in? Is it something that you discussed with the coaching staff to, to change the room to make it a little bit more dynamic? Yeah, I think that it was something that uh, we as a staff collectively identified, uh, trying to create, uh, you know, explosive plays. You know, when you go through, you think about the game of football, and there's two real, you know, stats are stats, but there are two ones that really matter, and that to me is can you protect the football on offense? Can you create takeaways on defense? So that turnover ratio is one, and then the explosive play ratio. How many can you create on offense? How many can you prevent on defense? And so we're not creating enough of those on offense, and it's hard to drive the football. 75 yards on, on the defenses in the Big Ten. So I wanted to get some more receiver body types to help create more explosive plays. So that was by design. And uh, even in the, uh, the portal uh, mindset to go after that as well as even as we're recruiting guys in our current roster. So definitely by design as a staff to be able to try to create more explosion by our offense. Coach, we're going to stay to our right. Zach Osterman, Indianapolis Star. Tom, regarding Ohio State and opening with the Big Ten opponent as often as you have, I guess, what have you learned from those experiences in terms of how you build week one prep when you've done this so many times before, having to start with a power, not just a Power 5 opponent, but a conference opponent? Well, I think that, uh, um, you know, like I said, it just fast forwards everything. You know, it just causes you, and I, and I get it, you know, certain opportunities, you can kind of have a, a chance to slowly build up to a game like that. Uh, we don't have that, that luxury. And so everything is geared around that. So I think that once you get through that process and you have a chance to prepare for that type of an opponent in that situation and knowing it's going to happen, because, you know, you think about this, you know, our sport, you know, we don't have any preseason games and you have two scrimmages that you have against your own, your own teammates. And then you have a, we do a mock game the week before. So that's just simulating situations, but you're not playing somebody else. And so to be able to have it where you go from that to having to play such a, high level opponent immediately, you know, it's challenging. You know, we have some young guys, you have some new guys, you gotta mold them together because best team wins on game day. So just trying to build that best team. So as we go through, you got more probably focus on game like situations than ever before in that window of time. But like you said, once you get through that and you have that opportunity, man, it really allows you, I think, to have an advantage, you know, which two, three, and four. We're staying down to our right. Uh, Coach, Daniel Olinger, Hoosiers now. Uh, in terms of the quarterback position, when you eventually do name a starter, how important is it to you and your coaches that the starter is a dual threat quarterback? We saw how Dexter Williams opened up the offense with his ability to run last year towards the end of the season. So just when you name a starter, how, is important, how important is it that they can also threaten in the ground game? Well, I just think, you know, I'm a defensive coach, and so by uh, trade, and, and I just know it gives us trouble. Anytime a quarterback can extend plays. And it's usually those when it's not, you know, scripted, you know, when they can be able to create, elongate, put pressure on your secondary, uh, and be able to beat you with his legs. You have to count for him in your, in your pressure, you know, whether you got to spy him or whatever you need to do. So I, I think anybody, you know, and I think moving forward, that's really what we want to be able to have at that position to be able to extend those plays. So yeah, I think it's a, a variable for sure. But at the same time, once you, you pick who that individual is, you got to make sure you're building you know, everything around them for they can be at their best and they can be able to, to be comfortable. And obviously whoever it's going to be is going to be, you know, a younger guy that's going to have to grow up really fast, you know. So, but I think that ability to extend plays, I think we're even seeing at the NFL level, how valuable that can be to keep that guy healthy. It's, a, it's obviously a, a, an extra weapon that's uh, very effective. Coach. For your coach. Coach Mason Williams with the Hoosier.com. I'm right here. Um, I'm curious, you mentioned with your defensive background, now you're bringing in a new position coach that's going to call the defense for you. What goes into that decision for you? Well, you know, for me, you know, I chose to call it a year ago because I thought that, that was best for our program at that time. Uh, but, you know, I had not called it, obviously, with all the different things that are going on and with, with the portal and the NIL and just the complexities that you now deal with, even at a higher level in that position. So I just felt very strongly as we went through that process. and. And I'm glad that I did it, but obviously feel like that we need, in order for us to get better and move forward, I wanted to bring somebody in to be able to call that, you know. And so I'm really excited about Matt. You know, knowing for a long, long time, and Coach Cutts, the one that really, you know, brought him up from a GA to a position coach to his coordinator there in their program for many years. And so uh, very close with him. 
and that was a big influence on me. But I, I feel like that uh, it's important for me to become the best head coach I can be, uh, the best you know, game day you know, manager of the entire game, both sides of the football and special teams, for me not to be focused in to call on the defense. And so I'm excited about that. I think it makes us better. And uh, I'm excited about what he's brought to our program. And so, But this is a situation where he came to learn what we do. We have a system we believe in. I want to make sure we stick with that, which we will. Our players believe in it. It fits our, our personnel, what we do. And I think he was a great compliment to that. So it brought some ideas for sure. But also I want to be able to have the ability and the flexibility to be in that offensive meeting time as well, making sure that everything in all three phases is being where we need to be to be able to be our best on game day. Down on our right, Coach. Yeah, Tom, Jack Ankeny, SI Indiana. You mentioned hiring Bob Bostad this offseason. Just how confident are you that, that he can bring significant change to that group this upcoming season? And with having so many guys that, you know, similar personnel as last year, what do you think it will take for those guys to kind of improve for the upcoming season? Well, it was a huge focus for sure. And then Bob has a tremendous track record and uh, in our conference. And so uh, I've already feel like we've uh, gotten better, you know, some certain things that, that he's brought. And uh, getting Matt Bedford back is huge, and losing him week one was a big blow uh, to us. He was our best offensive lineman. And uh, getting him back, and he's back to 100% now, which is exciting. I'm very excited for him. But I think the whole group, just to be able to mesh them, he's been with them all spring, being able to bring in his thoughts, his ideas, the toughness that he brings, just the attention to detail, the, the way he coaches them, and, and just, the, just the relentlessness of the way he approaches offensive line play. So uh, it's a huge part of our team. We know that. I know that. We understand that. It's been something that we addressed, obviously, and those guys got to step up. Got several guys that play a lot of football at that position for us. I'm excited about that group leading the way on our offense. Okay, we have time for two more. We'll start over here on our right. Hi, Coach. Uh, Carlo Braun, the Hoosier Network. Uh, another year where the starting quarterback for week one is kind of up in the air, but regardless, you have guys like Jalen Lucas who kind of broke out towards the end of the year. How do you see yourself implementing more plays and getting those guys more touches? Well, it's going to be by design without question. You know, getting Cam Camper back, you know, losing him last year was a big blow as well. And so uh, having him back healthy is going to be huge to be able to take some pressure off a young quarterback. And the backfield as well, Josh Henderson, I'm really excited about him. Christian Turner, another player we brought in through the portal. And I think we have a very, very strong running back room and have some flexibility, some different body types there, different body types of receiver, as was already mentioned. And uh, to be able to create those explosive plays, to be able to take some pressure off us having to drive the football. But we want to be able to do a good job of, of being able to have a system where our guys feel comfortable and whoever that quarterback is, that they can maximize their strengths. And so at the end of the day, it's being able to take your roster, maximizing those guys' skill sets where they can play their best football and be very, very productive. And at the end of the day, we got to score points. we got to score touchdowns in the score zone. we got to do a great job of staying on the field and playing team football. All right. Thank you, Coach. And we have one more down front here. Coach, the landscape of college football seems to be changing hourly, uh, but one of the big things was the elimination of divisions in the Big Ten. You know, how does that one give you the opportunity to play new opponents, and two, you know, what was your first reaction to that news? Well, I mean, I, I think when you look at you know bringing in UCLA and USC, and that's pretty exciting. That's awesome. You know, we bring 2024, UCLA comes to us. 2025, we get to go out to, to California to play USC. Uh, last time we played the Trojans, O.J. Simpson was your tailback. You know, so uh, bottom line is new opportunities, great time to be in this conference. Uh, you're going to see equitable schedules where teams are going to be playing teams more equally across the conference, which I think is a great thing, and that excites me as well, and playing some, some different teams on a more consistent basis. And so, But you look at it, though, there's a lot of great football teams in this conference, and so everybody's schedule is going to be tough, and I'm excited for the future of the Big Ten Conference. Have an awesome day. Elio. Thank you, Coach.